Hi Internet! So this morning I will uh, change the tire on my uh, KDM 690 and uh, I will show you the way I proceed because uh, I'm able to change my tire side of the road. I always have all the tools with me. So I will show you the way I proceed. I know a lot of people show about how to change tire. So I will show it to you. Maybe there's some trick I have that nobody take. So you will learn something for sure. And uh, it's a good thing to be able to change your tire, fix the flat side of the road. So let's go. Okay, so first, uh, because there's no center stand on a 690, so you need a small uh, stand uh, like a third leg on the road. So me, I have this one. It's a uh, pretty small. And uh, I always use that to lift the bike. So I will put a link down there where I bought this one. It's like, I don't know, $50, something like that. And it's really small. So, and it, it works. <laughs> Actually in the garage, I need to put a small piece of rubber to prevent sliding on the ceramic. But uh, on the road, in the gravel or asphalt, it, it's fully stable to, to change a wheel. So I will show you the way I proceed. So now, as you can see, the wheel don't touch the ground. So time to remove the wheel now. Okay, here it's 10 millimeters screw. No need to remove them. On the other side, this is a special tool I order. It's for from KDM and there's a fitting there. This one here, it's to remove the rear wheel and there's an insert here to remove the front one. So it's pretty nice. Don't take a lot of space and it, they are the tire iron also. Here I have torques on my side because uh, I have a ABS protector and the screw has to be longer so they are, uh, they are torques instead of 10 millimeters. Their spacer. No spacers, the spacers are really tight in there. So it's a good time to have a look on your, your brake pads, by the way. And uh, have a look on your bearing. So you turn those guy here, you see if they feel smooth. If there's no rust or dust in there, you will hear it, it will scratch. So now it's time to remove the tire. Let's go. So to remove the tire, I use a simply dishwasher soap. So <clears throat> you put a little bit around the tire.
remove the valve, the, the steam. So you have to unscrew the steam. Okay, now there's a, in the middle, it's higher. That, that reason is to put the bead of the tire inside there when you want to remove it. So that way the circle could go further if this part is inside. So to do that, first you have to break the bead. So you have to unlock the tire. The front one is easy because there's no bead lock on the rim. So you remove both sides like that. Once that is done, I don't know what my stupid steam that doesn't remove. But I always put the steam on the top of me because I want to be able to use the more space possible there and if the tire goes on the steam I will lose space here to to get the tire out so I put the steam there put my knee on the tire to push it Be aware to don't go too far because you could pinch the tube in there. On the side of the road, you have to be aware when you remove the tube to don't put it in the sand because if there's a grain of sand going in the tire with the friction when you ride, it will it will get a hole in there. So the other side now, you put the tire in the middle there. And you fold it like that and then you just press on it. So this one is removed and uh, as you can see it was time to be removed. It's a Dunlop D606. They are really aggressive. Okay, now another trick to prevent the, to reduce the friction. I put baby powder in the tire. That will help for friction. So when I'm on the road, I put the dish soap on the tire. But in the garage, I put grease. It's a tire mount lubricant. No more, the brand. 
nomartirechanger.com if you want to go see there. So we'll put around the bead. And uh, another thing, always wear glass when you change your tire. Because sometimes the tire iron flipped, it slides in your hand, and you could you receive it in your eyes. So it's, it's always a good thing to, to wear glasses. So I put grease on the outside, but also a little bit here inside. So rotation, I don't remember if those guys have rotation. I don't think so. it to hold my tire iron okay so this guy go like that the rotor is there okay same thing when you will enter the tire you want to put the bead in the middle Sometimes it's really hard those tires because they are stiff. And you don't want to put both one in there because it's harder. Slippery. When you take too much of time really hard. So just use small bite to push the tire in there. Okay, so this one there, so now the snake. This one, here. This is the, the one you want, because the other one with a small cable it broke. <laughs> it broke every time. Well, I put a little bit of uh, lighting stuff to help. And uh, you have to clean this guy to make sure there is no shit going in there. Okay, so once this is done, ok, 
Okay, you have to pull this guy. You put back that screw, just to make sure it won't go in again. Okay, and now, on the tire, there's a, a duct or something here. So normally that duct goes near the valve because it's the heaviest part of the tire. And because it's snobbies and I have bead, glass bead in my inner tube, I won't, uh, I don't know how you say that, balance it, put weight. And those, those inner tube are heavy duties. So they are a little bit harder to put in there. So first thing is to put in, I don't worry about if it's twisted or not. And after that, I make sure it's under the lip of the rim. Okay, so and now the funny tool, it's this guy here. <laughs> There's a small, there's a small match here that allows you to enter it. You enter it and you pull it. This guy clip on the lips of the rim. So that way you're sure you're not pinch your inner tube in there. So same thing. I put the steam in the front. I start here. Don't take too much at a time. Just like one inch or two. And you see this this guy, I push it and I, when I pull it, it stick to the lip. So that way I'm not supposed to pinch the inner tube. Okay, when you're near the hand, you have to make sure the bead is in the middle of the rim. Here we are. This, don't tighten it too much, but enough to make things hold in there. Okay. Put this guy back in. This is a, sometimes you get the inner tube with caps that you could remove the steam. So I grab those guys because you always have the tools with you. When you pop the tire, you have to, to have a look here at the line. It's same all around the tire. That shows 
the bead is at the right place because because there's no bead lock on uh, on uh, those rim this rim you don't hear the pop so you have to have a look to make sure everything is right so I don't know the max pressure here uh, Me, I put normally 24 in the front. No, I don't see. But I put, me, I put 24. So you could have a look on what you guys like. And when you install the tire, you have to to put a bigger pressure in there to make sure the beads go in place. I was at 40. Oh, this one is done. Okay, now it was hard to remove the axle, so we'll give a small shot of scotch right here just to remove all the, the rust could be stick there. Okay, it's time to install the tire now. Uh, okay, my front pad's still good. So, you won't be able to insert the tire because the pad are close to the thickness of the, the rotor. So me, I take the tire iron and you go smoothly in there and you put pressure to open them. That push back the oil on the top. Small shot of scotch right here. On the other side. Actually, it's not rust because it's aluminum, but it's mud, dry mud and sand. So, just to make things slippery. Okay. Okay. So, the first step is to enter the rotor first. And it's not always easy. It's easier when we are two. And you have to be aware of the ABS sensor. Okay, here we are for this one. And this guy, the axle.
to clean this guy here. Okay, so it's 27, the axle, and the torque for the axle, it's, uh, it's 45, and the lock nut, it's 15. So let's go to 45 here. And now 15 for the lock screw. I always have a look to see if there's space in there between the two spacer. I make sure everything is tied together. And because it's two screws, you have to do like three times each to make sure everything is tight. The other side. So the first thing you have to do when this is done it's to pump your front brake because I could tell you it's not funny when you arrive at the corner and there's no front brake. <laughs> so you have to pump it because we, we push back the plates, the pads, so they don't touch and you need to pump sometimes like five times. break so we're done for the front wheel so now we're gonna do the rear one okay one thing I forget to mention and I forget to do before for the front one it's always a good idea to remove the tension and the screw before you put the jack because this thing is really small and it's not fully stable and when you you work on a hard screw it could slide and make the bike fall There's a tricky, tricky thing with this small jack uh, because you're gonna lift the rear of the bike. They won't have brake anymore on the bike, so you will want to roll. So to prevent that, we have a small Velcro strap that we tie around the front brake lever to to make sure it stay there. Uh, here. <coughs> okay.
Put the bike in neutral. With the wheel front, be gentle with this jack. Remove the chain drive. Okay, here's the wheel. So we'll be near the same process. On this one, we remove the sprockets. Have a look, there's two bearings in there. Have a look if they spin fine. There's rubber inside there, you could remove. And there's another bearing here. Have a look. So by the same time we are here, we're gonna put soap. Check the bearing here, there's a spacer. Have a look of the bearings, fine. And the steam. Move the screw here. And on this rim, there's a bead lock on the rear one. So it could be a bit more tricky to break the bead. When you have two motorcycles, you could use the side stand. I won't start to explain that, but uh, you will be able to find on the internet how to break the bead using the side stand. But this one was easy because it's not a tubeless tire. On the other side. Always work on the rotor side. It's steam at 12 o'clock. there. Don't go too far. Make sure you don't pinch the inner tube.
same thing as the other one, I forgot to tell you. You have to push the bead in the middle of the rim. This tube is a super heavy duty, it's four mils. Okay, now it's the hardest part because the rear tire, it's more thick. I don't know, but it's, it's a lot more strong. So put the rim in the middle. Go there. And I have no trick for that. Oh, this one is really hard. Like there's no soap. This one wasn't easy. It's a good thing to clean the rim to remove all the shit in there. You have to inspect the rubber band to make sure it's clean. This guy is starting to have hole. Okay, I have two holes here. Because there was a time I tried to put the rim lock. And that wasn't a good idea because the bike was so shaky at more than 100 kilometers. So it wasn't a good idea. I love those tires, they are really aggressive and they are not so bad on the pavement, the last, uh, the front one, it's really done, but I drove like uh, 5,500 kilometers with it, so it wasn't so bad.
rotation. No, this one doesn't have also. Okay. So, time to get this guy there. There's some tires you could just do like that and it the, the goes in. <laughs> if you're aware to scratch your rim, you better to go to a tire center because that way, for sure, you scratch your rim. Oh, too much. Snake. This screw, I just tighten it every time. I don't know, I think it put pressure on the steam inside and the washer, it prevent the steam to, to pull away. But, it's not everybody put it. There are some people, they don't put it at all. I don't understand the way we're supposed to screw that on. Oh, okay. I think I have to put it that way. It will be easier to turn. There's air in there. It's not easy, so I have to put lube there. It's not easy with super heavy duty tube. Guy going back in. Okay. Okay, you have to make sure the inner tube is on the other side of the lips of the rim. Perfect. And 
there's the yellow duct. Here he is. But it's too late. I forget to to do it. So there. But okay. So same thing. You start. The steam is there. That will be hard. When there's a small part like that, it's not easy. Because the tire are and can go there anymore. Ah, here we are. So this one is done. When you're two on the road and you get a flat, it's like 30 minutes to fix a flat side of the road. You have to have a look here. So it sits good. So I put like a 27 here.
spacer. Let's clean the spacer. Go. Same thing as in the front. You open the, the brake pad and you have a look if they're still good. And uh, you could clean the slot here just to remove the sand. 